have a magic about developing a child. Most people, if it's raining outside or bad weather at Orchard, they might say, this is a great day for a walk. Let's go outside and see what this feels like. For 90 years, the Orchard School has made its own way. A unique brand of education that incorporates nature, nurture, and much, much more in between. The Orchard difference involves many things, many traditions, many people, none more important than mothers. It was a group of moms who started it all. I have two great aunts who were founders of the school, and the first Orchard School was on my great-grandmother's property at 52nd and Meridian Street. A handful of students and brave parents, brave families, and that would have been 1922 was the actual start. Certainly for the teachers, this was, this was new territory. They were, they were building it as, as it was happening. Magnificent that they had parents to draw upon who were full partners in the education. They were able to engage children in what we now know as experiential learning, as hands-on learning, as you know, the type of learning that, that truly mm, you're learning without realizing it. Their courage and risk-taking was no guarantee of long-term success, but word of the school did spread, and eventually the school migrated to its first real campus near 43rd and Boulevard Place. It seemed very, very large as a kid, but really, when you go by there today, it was very, very small. Well, there were different buildings back then, and uh, there was the old brown building, and there was the new brick building, and there was the gym, and there was the kindergarten. We uh, had a baseball diamond, and a football, which was then converted to a football field, and then a woods. We enjoyed playing in the woods as well. Uh, funny story about the uh, kindergarten, you know, it was like an old hut, like a Quonset hut or something. And uh, the Board of Health came out and was saying that they had to get the heat up to 70 degrees and my dad was having trouble. My dad didn't really have many janitors back then. He, he would go over in the mornings and stoke up the furnace for the, you know, the different buildings just to save on having a janitor. But one day he knew the Board of Health was coming out and they couldn't get the heat up to uh, 70 degrees. The head was about 68, so he went over there with some matches or a lighter and put it underneath the uh, thermostat to get it up to 70 degrees so the Board of Health would leave us alone. It was a place where unique, hands-on, nature-influenced teaching flourished. And sometimes, without design, traditions began. Notice the dust that's coming out of the tree? That's funny is turning colors, which means we're into the part of the tree that where the sap is. It was just a unique experience, and Mr. Lorenz would take us out and we would I think they still do it today. You tap the trees for maple syrup and so forth. Tapping the trees is about as orchard as you can get. Um, I don't think that it gets any bigger than that tradition. And I always looked forward to the smell of the maple syrup. I always looked forward to tapping the tree. Very much look forward to the, uh, the Christmas pageant. Uh, it was probably a little more traditional pageant than it is today. It seems like each grade had kind of a little responsibility. There are a lot of traditions like that at Orchard where you look forward to the year that you go to Chicago um, or you go to um, Nawbone or you know you can look up to the older kids. Those traditions each have a person that contributed to what perhaps at the time might have seemed we're going to do this once. <laughs> <laughs> but then, you know, the the response is so genuine and, and so and so warm that that it continues. As much fun as the kids were having, they might not have realized that they were breaking barriers because they didn't realize the barriers were there in the first place.
They didn't tell you you're a girl, so you can't do this. You were a student of Orchard School, and you played football, and you played baseball, and you tapped the trees to get the maple syrup out, and you took care of the pig. You did everything. Because this was started by, by very forward-thinking women, I have to believe that the, you know, their daughters and sons were going to be encouraged on a very equal footing. Because with that upbringing from Orchard, it didn't matter that I was a girl, and that I could do anything. So when I was a co-architect with Pete on all these courses, I wanted to become a member of the American Society of Golf Course Architects, which was all male. They'd never had a woman. So I applied and I met all the requirements and I was the, their first woman and I later became their president. In the 1950s, after dedicated fundraising by school leaders and parents, the current campus on 64th Street welcomed students. It would become home to new traditions while holding on to the Orchard Way with child after lucky child encountering teachers who made all the difference. Um, when I was in second grade, I had Mrs. Baker, and um, I just remember she always smiled. It didn't matter what the day was like. She was just always in a good mood, and she made sure that her entire class was always in a good mood. Fred Lorenz ran uh, the Nawbone Camp, and uh, he was my shop teacher. He had a truck, boards on it for sides and we would climb into this truck it had a canvas top and we would sing orchard songs as we drove down to uh, Nobone camp and just had wonderful experiences I remember mrs. Antle who taught English and she used to she was kind of an old grouchy but she was a doll really and she would say you will never be sorry you had me as a teacher I will teach you everything about English and by George, she did. <laughs> um, I think the first most vivid memory would be with Mrs. Gray in first grade. Um, her, she was so, she was very grandmotherly. And at the end of the day, you know, in your cubbies, you line up for your coats and you line up to get your hug for the end of the day. You know, everybody line up for hugs. And I mean, what a magical, fantastic, I mean, having a child now, that at the end of the day, someone hugs your kid and says, you did a great job today, or you know what, let's try to do better tomorrow. I mean, that's just, oh, I mean, it makes me want to cry right now. <laughs> you know, and it was kind of like you had this whole other family outside of your family, and they all cared about you, and they all cared about your well-being. And I think there are a lot of kids that don't get that. But at Orchard, you did. And at Orchard, you mattered to every single person that you talked to. As idyllic as it all sounds, it never is. There are highs and lows, and one man, more than perhaps any other, led the school through them. He always felt Orchard could help kids. And he would take kids that maybe other schools didn't want. And I really think he thought Orchard could make a difference. He was reachable. You could always talk to him. You could, and he always spoke, he knew everybody's names. And he'd come up and he'd put his hand on your shoulder and walk down the hall with you, asking what's going on in your life. He brought Orchard through the tough times. He started Orchard in the early 30s, and then of course, here's the Depression. You know, and he became the head of Orchard after six or seven years. One fall, he had three kids in the first grade. One of them was my oldest brother. So he only had like two paying customers. And so during, he used to, you know, lose like 20 pounds in the summer worrying about the enrollment. And finally, toward the late 60s, you know, the, the Lilly family really helped out Orchard and really set us on a, you know, financially on a good course. The case for support for the school that was made to Mr. Lilly was a tremendous turning point and, and has served the school well, you know, and continues to forevermore. And, and Mr. Thompson was able to make the case that the combination of the enabling and rigorous environment in the classrooms at Orchard School the experiences that the students had outside the school, the respect for nature, that that contributed to something that Mr. Lilly was interested in, which is character education. I, the story of the school for me again is, uh, is Mr. T and, and the many moments of greatness that 
might not have seemed so at the time, each and every encounter that he had with a student was so respectful and so enabling that, that he has left his mark on now hundreds, thousands of very successful adults. In second grade, you're paired up with an eighth grader, and you look up to this eighth grader the whole year, and you know you get to do the maypole with them in the spring. There's a sense of tradition, and you look forward to it, and um, it's something just unique to this place that, you know, as a really young person, you learn what a tradition means. I just so vividly remember that day. It was a beautiful day, and I just remember looking forward to it so much because, you know, you feel like you've arrived in a way. It's just, it's something solid. I think that every single eighth grade girl can look back on who's ever been through here and remember that. The Orchard School has been an oasis of child-centered learning for 90 years now and counting. Orchard allowed each student to have adventures. And one of the things that everyone says is Orchard develops a lot of independence, independence of thought, independence of inquiry, and so forth. But there was always a sense of if you were interested in something, you could pursue it. And so there was this feeling that made you kind of courageous in being a student, so that you felt you had value in the way you thought. Orchard establishes an educational foundation, but also a self-esteem in a child that I've, I don't know any place else that does that. Every day was a great day here, and I love that. Who wouldn't enjoy going to Orchard with, you know, with the teachers that we have and the facility that we have and, and all the opportunities we have here. And if my parents were alive, I think it would be the first thing I would thank them for in my life. It just makes me warm in the tummy. That's all I can tell you. The education part, the friendship is there forever. I just don't think there's another orchard ever.